Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Insider Preview Series. If you're new to the channel and haven't seen one of these videos before, hi, I'm Loaf, I am the lead community manager for Deadside, and together in this series, we take an early look into some of the work in progress features that are currently being tested in Deadside. This particular video was filmed on the closed test server, meaning that everything you are about to see is subject to change, and it will likely change, at least in some way or another. Alright, with the intro stuff out of the way, today we're going to be going over this WIP post, titled Sleeping Bags and Vehicles. And up first, we have sleeping bags. In its current state, sleeping bags are constructed using 10 rags and can be placed almost anywhere on the map. Once you place down a sleeping bag, you can then respawn on them. Each time you spawn on a sleeping bag, it will have a cooldown of 5 minutes, which is pretty typical. Also, any sleeping bags within 300 meters of each other will be linked together automatically. This prevents people from having tons of respawns in one dense area, which I think is a good thing. You can destroy these sleeping bags pretty easily, with just a couple of shots from any weapon, explosives will work, and I'm pretty sure melee will also. That's sleeping bags. It's a pretty simple mechanic really, at least from a general overview. But if we dive into the gameplay experience, this is going to seriously change how respawning works in Deadside. It's going to give you a lot more control over your respawns, as well as giving enemy players the ability to remove some of your respawns, which is something we haven't actually had before in Deadside. Personally, the thing I'm most excited for with the introduction of sleeping bags is the changes it's going to bring to raiding. With the introduction of sleeping bags, the base respawn marker will be removed, meaning it's actually possible to destroy all of the respawn points inside of an enemy base and take control of that base with your own sleeping bags. And this is something you haven't really been able to do up until this point. If you're a raider and you take control of an enemy base, you always have to have somebody basically sitting on their respawn marker to make sure that they don't respawn, grab a gun, and, well, kill you, right? But now, with sleeping bags, you can walk in there, clear all their own bags, and set down your own. You have a much better chance now, which I think is cool. Raiding in Deadside has always favored the base owner heavily up until this point, at least in my opinion. So it's cool to see the raiders have more tools at their disposal. Speaking of raiding, another cool feature that I didn't even mention in this most recent Steam post is the ability to throw explosive charges. Overall, I think this change makes explosive charges a whole lot easier to use. The previous system of right-clicking to place the object, and then actually placing the object with the base building controls, this old system was a bit slow and clunky and something you really don't want to do during a high-stress situation like a base raid. Also, this makes explosive charges a lot easier to use outside of a raiding context, which I think is a super cool thing. Alright, lastly, let's talk about cars. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right, we're actually going to be talking about cars today, but don't get too excited, the cars are still a long ways off from release, which means I don't even have any footage of cars to show you today in this video, but we do have some things to talk about. Essentially, the team is working on vehicle netcode optimization, and they are making good progress, which is a very good sign. If you didn't know, the biggest challenge of creating a functional vehicle inside of a multiplayer game is always going to be netcode. I've talked about all this before on the channel, and I've talked about it a lot in this Steam post. I write all of these, by the way. So, to avoid repeating myself, basically it comes down to the fact that the physics engine of Unreal 4 is non-deterministic. So, the game server needs to sync them for each client, while also compensating for ping, packet loss, FPS drops, and other really fun lag-related things. If you'd like to learn more about this sort of thing in general, in the description, I've left a GDC talk by Glenn Fieldler. I hope I pronounced his name right. He was a network programmer for Respawn Entertainment. He worked on the original Titanfall, so he knows what he's talking about. It's about an hour long. It's some serious nerd stuff, but if you're interested, it's a good talk, and I've left it in the description. All of this is just to say that the ground vehicles are done when they are done. The guys at Bad Pixel have learned that when it comes to vehicle netcode, all it takes is one bad problem found during playtesting, that might take several months to solve. But with all that in mind, I've been watching the internal playtests of ground vehicles happening over the past few weeks, and they do look promising. So even though I can give you five different reasons why I can't tell you when this feature will release, I can still tell you that, at least personally, I think it'll be sooner than most people expect. But, you know, still not that soon. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little insider preview. I will have more videos for you soon. Thanks for watching.